My view is very clear. Mr. Harper is a bigot. Mr. Harper doesn't like Muslims. Mr. Harper, I, I once said publicly to Mr. Harper, when you put your children to bed, ask yourself whether you would like your children to have been abused like Omar Khadr. Completely unsurprising events today from Alberta. A judge has granted Omar Khadr bail. The confessed, convicted murderer and war criminal will be out on the streets while he appeals his conviction at Guantanamo Bay. Problem with that is it's illegal. And what I mean by that is in order to get out of jail early, Cotter signed a plea bargain, and part of that plea deal was that he would not contest or appeal his conviction. See, Omar Cotter was put on trial. He was tried for war crimes, including murdering a U.S. Army medic named Christopher Spear. He was convicted. He confessed to it. He couldn't do much elsewise. We had videotape of him assembling improvised explosive devices, posing with machine guns. I mean, we had him dead to rights. He confessed, confessed convicted 40-year sentence, but he struck a secret plea deal with the prosecution. If he agreed not to appeal and just to quietly go away, oh, and also not to make any profit off his crimes, they would let him go to Canada to serve an eight-year sentence. He signed this plea agreement, and so did his lawyers. But of course, if someone is willing to murder another man, they're probably willing to lie. Omar Khadr lied. He is appealing his conviction. What's troubling is that the courts in Alberta are allowing him to break that deal and to lie, because really the courts in Alberta are on Omar Khadr's side. See, it's one thing to say you're on side of an accused terrorist, but Omar Khadr is a confessed terrorist, not just a terrorist, he's a kind of Muslim Nazi, as you can see in his very detailed confession. Like his father before him, he hates Jews and wants to kill them. He hates Westerners, and he's never renounced or recanted those views. He's never renounced Al-Qaeda. He's never renounced his father's terrorism. He's never said he regretted the murder he committed. In fact, at his sentencing hearing in Guantanamo Bay, Carter was asked if he had anything to say. He did not, he specifically did not say he regretted the murder. He turned to the widow of Christopher Spear, named Tabitha Spear, and said he regretted making her a widow because she was collateral damage, but he never expressed regret for murdering her husband. You see the difference? He remained proud of that deed. No one forced him to say that. He said that voluntarily. I bet that is not going to be reported in the daily news because the news in Canada has become a form of PR, stenographers for Cotter and his handlers. See, that's another thing that worries me, is Cotter will be in the care of a clique of lawyers and activists that want to use him for political reasons to attack, let's say, Bill C-51, the anti-terrorism bill that uh, is uh, going through Parliament right now, to attack our military and security and intelligence and foreign policy and diplomacy. It's one thing for a terrorist to have a lawyer. I believe everyone should have a lawyer in court. Paul Bernardo should have had a lawyer, and he did. But it's a different thing when the lawyer actually becomes affectionate and becomes a PR man cheerleading for the murderer. It would be distasteful if Paul Bernardo's lawyer said, he's a wonderful guy. Come on, you guys, stop being so hard on him. I want him to live with me. That would be so strikingly bizarre. And yet, Omar Khadr, like Paul Bernardo, has shown a cold-bloodedness and a deep belief in murder. Omar Khadr is a Muslim Nazi, and yet we are allowing him to be normalized by the media, by law professors, by his own lawyers, and now by Alberta courts. This is a disgrace. It's judges and other elites versus the rest of us. We can never again take this judge or others like her seriously when they say that they will defend Canadians from accused terrorists how can we take them seriously when they won't defend us against convicted terrorists? We can never again take pundits seriously when they say, trust us, we know what the right thing is on national security, when we have a real security risk and they want to put them out on the streets. We cannot trust our media and court elites anymore. This must be an election issue in the next federal campaign. We can't throw out this judge, but we can throw out any MP who supports this judge. If you want to learn more about Omar Khadr, if you want to read his confession and plea deal with your own, plea deal with your own eyes, visit KhadrFacts.com. For the Rebel.media, I'm Ezra Levant.